Yeah. Okay. So in this lesson, we look at um, the 3D CAD modeling, but again, keep it in uh, three sections or three lessons. In the first part, which is this lesson, we will look at um, what is a CAD model application. Obviously, most of you may be using CAD already, but we'll try to bring out some interesting aspects of how they are represented, how they are stored, and some clues to how to make them more accurate, how to make them more compact, how are they actually uh, understood by computer, things like that. And finally, I'll throw in a little bit about where the future is leading to in, even in CAD, how CAD packages are evolving and what to expect in the next few years. So to do that, let's look at the history of CAD. So if you look at the first, very first application of CAD came from MIT in USA, a person called Sutherland who was working for his PhD and he designed what is called a sketch pad in an era where computers used to talk only through data cards. In those age, in those days, he came with an interactive computer graphics kind of application. Then it took off really in 80s with AutoCAD coming with their 2D CAD drawing. First AutoCAD, even now AutoCAD is one of the most popular packages in the world. They came with 2D drafting. So they replaced the dra drawing or manual drafting with computer uh, design. But these are all wireframes only. You're representing 3D shape is only with lines. Okay. Then came in the last 10 years, uh, very intricate modeling, surface modeling, solids modeling and new user interfaces. So now your virtual reality became a reality about 10 years back where you could put on the goggles and see the model in three dimensions very realistically. And for complex, complex models, it really helps. Now of course, 3D is becoming a reality even in TVs now. But we should have in short time maybe 3D desktop based CAD applications in no time at all. That's the historical perspective. Now when it comes to storing the models, only wireframe is not useful because if you just store represent a 3D line in terms of x1, y1, z1 and x2, y2, z2. It is sufficient to see the line diagram, but you cannot use it to calculate area or property. So that way, these are useless. Surface model is the beginning of um, 3D, 3D modeling, but you can still represent a 3D surface and calculate surface area, but not volume. This is good for your lofted surface, car bodies, plane bodies, ship bodies and things like that. Where surface shape is more important, volume enclose is not important. Where it really comes uh, into play is 3D modeling, where how do you represent 3D model in computer memory? Still finally you do the surfaces only, but now the surfaces enclose a volume okay? and these surfaces have to be watertight. What I mean is the area has to be completely enclosed, there should be no leakage. Then only we say the solid model is complete. So one way we define that also where, surface, where solid is. Each surface you define a outward pointing normal. The lines, arrows which you see here, the normals always point from inside to outside. This is how a computer stores and uh, understands a geometry of a 3D model. So you have contiguous surfaces, watertight uh, body, and then you have this outward normals which will, which show where the material lies inside to outside. Now the good thing about CAD, see, CAD model C is, it's easy to store. Okay, now today's flash drives with 8 GB or 8 16 GB memories can store literally thousands of drawings if not hundreds of complex drawings. Okay, that is one big advantage. Number two, retrieving a drawing, a drawing, instead of opening let us say 10 drawers and hunting for the right drawing, if you know the drawing name or keyword or anything like description, you can retrieve it in within in milliseconds, right, maybe seconds. Third, it's a 3D model is far more easy to visualize in by panning, zooming, rotating than by looking at cross sections after cross sections of that is an engine block. An engine block or a, or a complicated compressor casing may have several cross sections to describe that. Impossible for you know most of our young generation engineers to understand. But a 3D model we can understand very easily. We can verify it very easily okay? and verification with some equations and rules which satisfy the relationship between number of vertices, edges and faces. The fixed rules for that and it can be used to verify that. And you can modify easily, unlike paper drawing. Okay, you can keep versions of it. You can keep hundred versions. Say, okay, the nth version was better than mth version, and you can pull it out again and go back and look at that. You can send it by email or on network very easily, exchange it, and finally you can reuse. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You literally have can pull out the old wheel and then use the wheel in the new drawing. So these advantages are so fantastic that people are moving to CAD. The only thing is starting point is painful. Creating the first time, the first model is very painful. 
But once you create that, the advantage is far overweigh the, the small problem of creating the first one. Okay. Just want to check how many of you do not use CAD on 3D, 3D CAD. Okay. So first step you have to take at some point of time. Now you do not have to again get a 3D modeling software. These days we have every other city has a lot of CAD agencies. You can just give a 2D drawing to them and they will make a 3D drawing. Of course the question is what do you do with 3D drawing? The very first thing is you can calculate the weight accurately and that itself is a significant benefit in many from this. Calculate the weight accurately so you can estimate the costing accurately. But other advantages of apart from weight calculation, you can use the same 3D model for stress analysis which we were discussing in the morning. You can use it for converting the same drawing into tooling drawing where is the molds or dies or patterns or code boxes. Same thing for generating the tool path for machining those uh, tooling. Okay. And finally, simulation which you will see in this course later on. So all these are advantages of having the 3D model and those are again far more way, more way the benefits or initial problems of doing that. Now you may have different programs for different applications. So you have let us say ANSYS for stress analysis and let us say for tool design you have let us say Delcam and for simulation you have some other software. Now problem is each of these talks in a different language or stores data in different language. And it will be very difficult to exchange unless they all have a common standard. So IGS is one common standard. Already IGS 3, 4, 5 have come out, the versions of IGS. And latest IGS are able to handle solid models also more comfortably. Earlier IGS was only handling surface models easily. But even better standard than that is STEP. Okay. And STEP standard is actually again geared for different domains. So you have STEP standard for machining, STEP standard for casting which is still not fully ratified step standard for automobile industry and so on. So that makes it easy for the exchange between the same domain kind of people. The last one is STL here. STL stands for a short form for stereolithography which was the first RP machine, rapid prototyping machine which was, which came out in the world market in 89, 88-89. So they used a different format because they found IGS and step were very difficult to create this layer by layer fabrication which was necessary for this. So now of course we say STL is also is simple triangle language because what they do is a complicated surface of any solid model, they break up into triangles. And a simple STL file, uh, let us say for a uh, pyramidal structure like this, let us say you have four vertices, four coordinates, the STL file will look like that. You have, you define the facet normal, normal gives the direction of the normal, outward pointing normal. Then you define the three vertices of every triangle and then end face it and you repeat that for all the faces in the part. So a, a, a cube for example will have how many faces? 12 faces because these are all triangles. So you cannot have store squares, you have to store triangles. Now this has become suddenly very popular because it is a very robust format, easy to write, easy to read, easy to manipulate, easy to display, volume calculation, cross section calculation. So this has become a de facto standard for rapid prototyping, manufacturing and simulation. Only for CNC manufacturing, they do not use it because this is an approximation. If you have a curved surface like cylindrical, you are divided into the number of triangles and that is not exactly a perfect thing. So for manufacturing on CNC, you switch to IGS format, but for all everything else, especially simulation, they use STL format. Now remember STL format does not have a units, those numbers could mean millimeter or centimeter or inches. So usually when you import a STL file, you have to just check what is the size of that. By default it is in millimeters, but maybe you have to convert into inches to millimeters or maybe centimeters to millimeters. Now let us look at the building blocks of castings. When you look at any casting, pause for a moment and say what does the overall shape look like? And the best way to understand is to tell, to imagine how you will describe the casting on a phone to your friend. So you will say okay, the casting looks like a more or less open rectangular box or a solid rectangular block. So the way you describe that is a starting point for your lot of analysis, lot of thinking even 3D modeling. So one looks like a rectangular uh, block, but it is a hollow block open at the top. Another one is a wheel kind of a shape with lot of spokes. So we start describing the shapes like that, that is the overall shape. Then the shape can have either depressions or protrusions. And again you have to start looking at language of the engineers here. So when I say depressions, we are talking about hole and pocket and slot 
protrusions been talking about boss or a rib or a flange and things like that. Okay. These are local features. Then you have feature modifiers or connectors. So a taper or a chamfer or a fillet, it actually connects two features. Okay. It lies in between the two features. So with these three basic uh, language of engineers, we can start analyzing and modeling the shapes. Okay. So let us go a little ahead deeper into that. We have several modeling packages available today. These are only a small subset of what is available in the market today. And major ones like Autodesk and Catia, which also owns uh, Desol system, which owns Catia and also now SolidWorks, okay. and ProE and SolidEdge and UGS, they are all some of the more popular packages. There are also many other packages which are now slowly becoming very low cost, available free of cost. Many of our students now use things like SketchUp, which is a free 3D modeling software developed by MIT again. Okay. From Sketchpad to SketchUp is a long journey for MIT, but they are making now, solid modeling is now like commodity. Software is easy to use, very low cost, and more, many people are there who can do, do 3D modeling for you. How do they create a model? Take any model, first you look at a 2D section. You can sketch the section as if in a 2D plane, and you can extrude it either a straight line or you can revolve it. In both cases, the cross section is constant, but you can also change the path from either straight or curve to a complicated path, and the cross section can also change along the path. So, if you are talking about an exhaust manifold, it is a complicated path and complicated section which changes the cross section also. Okay, so, these are the first step of creating a 3D model. Next, what you can also do is you can do Booleans. Booleans are your Boolean, al Boolean algebra. So, you can take your two any two shapes, let us say you take this block and, uh, and, the, and the cylinder and you can do either union which is a combination of those two, okay, combined volume of those two or you can say A minus B which is not the same as B minus A and third you can say is intersection which is a common area occupied by both the bodies. Using these three, in fact four because difference is different, A minus B is different from B minus A, you can start looking at shapes and you do not have to start from basic shapes. You can create a shape from a sketch, combine that with other shapes and keep building up more and more complicated shapes. So, it is not very difficult to do that. Now, these mod programs are now getting more advanced. On the left side which you see, instead of, no, we are talking about 3D models, but we are looking at a 2D screen all the time. But can we start looking at depth? So, a, a goggles, a 2D go a stereo goggles will give you the feeling of depth. Okay? And more important, you can immerse yourself in the world in the sense that you actually feel you are moving in a 3D world. So, imagine you are moving inside a truck or inside a plane okay, and you can see where the wire harness is, where the electricals are, where the pneumatics are and you can start looking at those things. You are immersed in the world. You know, one trick they do in most of these uh, virtual reality labs, I mean the main labs in USA. I went to one lab in Buffalo in, in New York state. They give the goggles to you and then they say, okay, now you go into the virtual world. In the virtual world, there will be steps, okay. And then you feel as you are climbing the steps, and then the after step, there is a there is no there is empty space. So, you, start, you get such a jerky feeling that you suddenly wake up from a dream as if you are falling. So, it, it just to give a shock to people, they do tricks like that. But virtual worlds are getting more and more and more real, okay. So, the avatar kind of a days are not very far off where we can actually do those things in real life. This is about depth or reality of vision. We also touch. There are technologies now where you can, you are making a 3D model on the computer and you can close your eyes and you can actually feel the touch and you can see how uh, and you can actually make a cut. You can make, put a combine like a, like a clay, you can combine two shapes or you can subtract some shape, virtual clay modeling you can do. And at the end of the whole process, you can export that and you can actually manufacture it in a real life world. So, virtual or digital clay modeling is becoming very popular. Okay. These technologies already exist as of now. This is an example of how we, we made a Ganesha using a virtual clay modeling. So, you start from a 2D drawing just as a reference point, then you start putting those clay, okay, the first one, then you start putting the crown and things like that and you can combine the, the other operation, engineering operations. For example, the bottom, the pedestal is so perfect, you cannot do it by clay modeling. You take cross section and revolve it. So, you can combine the regular engineering modeling with the clay modeling to create you know, pretty complicated shapes in a very short time. And so, to summarize the, this part, this lesson, 
So solid models are essential for CAT CAM and simulation. So there is no discussion about it. The world has gone to that. The days are coming when the manufacturers are going to send their 3D CAD models and ask you for a quotation and ask you for a simulation result. These are already becoming standard in many parts of the world. So 3D CAD CAM is a starting point for these things. And difficulty in initial creation is offset by the, all the other benefits later. Many programs available, they are low cost, user friendly and um, easy to use. Now the, the formats are there already for exchange of models from CAD to CAM to CAE to simulation and costing whatever. And uh, like one of the most popular standards is STL format. And you can create the models using several techniques. We mentioned uh, extrusion, sweep, Boolean operations. You also have feature based modeling where you don't have to change the shape. You want to increase the whole size, you just say whole diameter is so much, length is so much, you can edit the hole without plugging the hole and again recreating. You can just edit the hole like that. Okay. And the advanced user interface are coming, making it more, even more easy to use, more interesting to use and so on. But finally, end of the day, any 3D model has to be, have three characteristics. It has to be complete means no missing faces, no empty faces and all that. It has to be accurate, dimensionally accurate, shape as accurate. And finally, it has to be correct in the sense that your end of the day, your, your volume or surface area should be as, uh, should be matching the actual values. You can have two shapes which are uh, giving the same volume, but also it has to be the correct volume and correct dimensions. So these three characteristics have to be taken care in 3D modeling. Okay.